Um, Welcome back. Well, currencies have uh, become increasingly uh, sensitive to political developments both locally and abroad as politics continues uh, to dominate the headlines. We find out how we can uh, possibly uh, cash in on uh, some of those swings and joining us for that conversation is uh, Jamil Ahmed who is Vice President of Corporate uh, Development and Market Research at FXTM. Uh, Jamil, thank you so much for your time and welcome to the Africa Studios. I recall you were just saying off air that you've done a lot of work in Europe. I hope our Africa Studios uh, meet the standard as well. But let's just talk about all of these swings in, 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 in currencies that are obviously being di dictated by politics. So this morning, fresh news out of the US. Uh, Trump leaked some information that he wasn't supposed to leak. He denies it, of course. But we've seen the dollar react to this. So just your views on that US economy and the likely impact that we're likely to see on the dollar, which has been under pressure for some time uh, due to the political developments there. Thank you very much for having me, Thursday. Political news is dominating the financial market mm. headlines and the movements like I've never seen before because political risk used to be something that we'd associate with emerging market economies and developing economies. But over the past year, we've had the Brexit, mm -hmm. political risk in the UK, Donald Trump in the US elections, and mm -hmm. Trump is continuing to dominate the news headlines like you've just pointed out. Mm -hmm. More recently, we've had the French elections and the Euro. But yes, political news and political risk is something now that investors are going to have to keep paying attention to mm -hmm. because it's dominating the headlines, it's dominating the movements, and also the trend that I'm seeing is that investors are now beginning to pay less attention to the macros mm -hmm. and the economic data and instead they're reacting to political news which is something that's completely new and used to be something that would associate just with the emerging market economies mm -hmm. and interesting you say that because our economies and our currencies are benefiting from the political risk right now that's happening abroad we've seen our rand strengthen to levels that are surprising many traders because it's strengthening against a backdrop where we're facing a ratings downgrade from another ratings agency we've We've got slow economic growth. We've got low uh, business confidence. So emerging market ca um, regions capitalizing from what's happening there offshore. Well, I'll tell, tell you what I think when it comes to emerging market currencies. Mm -hmm. Beginning with the RAND, I believe it's oversold. I also believe that most emerging market economies and their currencies are oversold because their economies are actually still performing relatively well. Now, what's been priced in over the past couple of months, if I talk about the emerging markets as a whole, is Donald Trump protectionist policies, how he's going to be very business friendly to the United States, the US dollar should continue to rally, mm -hmm. US economy should hit an upper level. And as a result of this since November, the emerging market currencies, whether it's in Asia, mm -hmm. Africa, mm -hmm. mostly in Asia because of protectionism risks, mm -hmm. they've slumped. Mm -hmm. Malaysian ringgit, um, Indonesian rupiah. Mm -hmm more closer to home the South African rand, although that's also because of domestic uh, risks as well as political risk. Mm -hmm. Generally, though, I would say they're very uh, undervalued for the economies that are performing well. For example, South Africa benefits from a high interest rate policy and the carry trade. Let's actually talk about the euro because we've seen the euro make some moves there. I understand that there's some GDP data that's out of uh, the eurozone later on today. But what, what, what are the, the risks for the euro now that Brexit is out of, well not Brexit, the French <laughs> elections are out the way. Brexit has still got another two years, right? <laughs> So long, and it keeps dragging and dragging and dragging. But right, so this French election uh, came out as expectation, and uh, the uh, rhetoric that risks in the eurozone have subsided as a result of the fact that we're not going to see a Frexit. So, what are your views on the euro currently? Well, I think that Europe is surprised to the upside because the biggest risk of populism and anti-government, or anti oh, we call it populism in general, mm -hmm. were in Europe. So we thought the French elections would be a big risk. There was other elections around Europe that mm -hmm. were a big risk. My view is that the euro is very undervalued. And while the French elections in Italy at the end of last year, mm -hmm. we've had Holland in between were dominating headlines, economic data from Europe is impressive. Mm -hmm. It's beginning to show that it's turning the corner. It looks like it could be consistent. Mm -hmm. I'm personally bullish on the euro over mm -hmm. the medium and the longer term. And I do believe the dollar is valued too strong. Mm -hmm. And if the dollar does weaken, generally the correlations that the euro is going to benefit. Mm -hmm. And with the Brexit, ongoing uncertainty. We mm -hmm. talked about two years of negotiations, mm -hmm. which... An we, election that still has to happen. Yeah, another election in the UK. <laughs> Four years in a row, we've had an election. 2012, referendum, general election, mm -hmm. EU referendum, another general election next mm -hmm. month. I believe that the pound is going to be vulnerable. Mm. Um, I think that actually the pound is overvalued for a election that's taken place in just one month mm -hmm. and the two years of economic uncertainty. And what we need to remember here, Europe data is improving. Mm -hmm. So Europe has some negotiating power here. 
because Europe might not need trade with the United Kingdom as much as the United Kingdom needs trade with Europe and the single passport access. So I'm personally, I think Europe is turning the corner. Yes, we've said this before and it's been shorter lived, but I do believe that the euro, when it's valued below 110 against the dollar, over the medium and longer term, I think there's some prospects. Well, some interesting insights there, Jamil. Thanks so much for joining Thank us. You. And do visit us again when you uh, come Thank to you. South Africa. Of course, that was Jamil Ahmed, Vice President of Corporate Development and Market Research, FXTM. Another short break we're heading into.